and welcome to Mindflux's brand new video series entitled Sound Alike. So in these new videos, what we're going to be looking at is creating sounds from well-known productions. Um, and we would really like it if you could email us in at info at mind-flux.com with any suggestions um, we will try our best to recreate them. So for this first edition, what we're going to be recreating is Henry Schwartz's blend of a really lovely track by Pat Thomas and Ebo Taylor. The title of the track, I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to try anyway, is Eni Namia Na Amesero. Uh, again, sorry, that's probably not the correct way of pronouncing it, but this is a track that I have been asked to redo by a former student of mine, uh, Ryan, and a good friend of mine, Matt. Um, it's, a, it's a truly amazing track, and I've discovered by doing a bit of research a whole new love for a different set of artists, and I regularly have it now playing on Spotify. It's some really amazing music out there, so if you haven't checked out Pat Thomas or Evil Taylor yet, I would highly recommend that. So the aims of these videos are to look at ways of recreating the, the sounds from these classic records using some pretty well-known soft synths. So for example, in uh, these videos, we are gonna be using Diva, we're gonna be using Ableton's built-in um, synths, which are called Operator, which is the FM one, and Wavetable, which is obviously a Wavetable synth. And we're also gonna be using some set of samples from Ableton. Obviously, if you're not using Ableton, if you're in Logic or FL Studio, you can use alternatives. Um, a second aim, what we're going to be looking at doing is how do we use the sounds we've created, how do we use the MIDI loops we've created in our own productions. So obviously that's quite a lot to take in and as you can hear the track is relatively complex. So what we're going to be doing is breaking the video down into three parts. So video one, we're going to be looking at the drums and the bass. Video two, we're going to be looking at the music and vocals. And in video three, we're going to be reworking all those parts. So without further ado, we're going to have to bring the track in. As you can see, I've already got the loops set up. And we're going to have to look at ways of analyzing these. So if you're not a great keyboard player or you aren't great at recognizing pitch, I would highly suggest looping a section of the track and from there slicing it up. So let me just mute that so we're not getting any more of the remake I did earlier. So I'm going to have a look at this and just maybe take out, because I'm just wanting the bass, so let me just show this so you can hear it. Maybe just going to delete some of these transients just to allow the bass notes to come clearly through. And it'll make it a little bit easier to actually analyze the track. So once we've done this, we're going to slice it up. Um, okay, that should be enough. Okay, so right click, slice. I'm going to use the built in because I don't want any effects on them. I'm going to make sure the loop isn't set up. Uh, now I'm going to go into my audio effects and bring in the spectrum analyzer. Okay, make sure it's in the highest resolution, which is 16384. Double click the black area just to make it a little bit bigger. And what we're going to have to do is isolate each note. So prior to that, let's just tidy things up and create a MIDI clip on our bass track. Okay, so definitely don't need all this gray, gray area, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to crop it. Okay, I'm going to select them all, so Command A, zero to switch them all off or deactivate them, and then I'm only going to activate the first slice. So, don't want that to play, let's unsolo there, and... Okay. So, hovering over 
the note for the bass, which is here, we're getting A sharp zero. You can see on the bottom left of the spectrum, the note is there. And wherever I put the mouse, the note changes. So obviously you want to hover over the highest peak for the bass part. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our bass. And I'm going to draw out A sharp zero. So now we're on to the next note. So we're on to slice two. I do believe it's the exact same note. Just double check. Yep. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through each individual note. I know that could be quite boring, um, but I'm just showing you the technique I would use to analyze a set of sounds. So number three. Yep, definitely a bass part. And we're down to F0. There we go. So that's a good start. As you can see, I've already got a couple of clips up here, and this is my pre-made bass. So here we go. What I would advise is just pausing the video and taking down the notes. So let's just have a listen to that. This is just playing the standard default Moog patch on D.Va. So let's jump into D.Va and start recreating this bass. Okay, so now we're in D.Va. I don't want to use the Moog. Um, you could if you want, but I personally don't want to. Um, I'm going to go into the presets. I'm going to go into templates, and I'm going to just choose the Juno 60. We're doing bass, so the patch doesn't need to be poly. And let me just play that now. Sounding nice, so let's set up these oscillators. So, first of all, I want the pulse to be square, I want the sub to be square, and I want to bring up the sub level to full. Just add that extra beef in there. I'm going to choose the second saw, that's a nice bit of vibe. So from there, what we can look at doing is setting up the filter. Uh, I don't want to use the cascade filter. I'm going to use the multi-mode filter. Uh, the reason being is once I've created my bass patch, I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to add a bandpass version to create a similar vibe to what Henrik Swartz layered over the original bass part in the track, which is from a standard live bass. So. This will give me a good option. I'm obviously going to take the cutoff down to kind of dull out those higher frequencies and a nice little bit of resonance will be good. That's good, but I feel we need to open up the filter a little bit. So I'm going to make sure this is on envelope two, which it is, and we're going to apply a small amount of this parameter. So what this does is sends this envelope to modulate the cutoff. So with this envelope, I, to be honest, it sounds pretty good, but for example, you could have the filter opening up very slowly with the attack. And you can see if it's too slow and the notes are too short, you're not getting much. You can use the K to tighten up the sound or loosen it up. So I think there is really nice. One thing I would like to do um, to kind of make it more like a live bass is put the keyboard amount up. So this means if I play higher up on the keyboard, so if I just engage the MIDI arm, so I'm going to play the highest C in the keyboard, which is C5, and I'm going to play the lowest C, so C1. You can see it's a bit duller, and if I play each C up the octaves, opens up, so it kind of reacts tomberly to the same style as a live bass. So you can hear on the part, on the second bar, where it goes up to the second octave, we're getting a nice bit of more open filter. Okay, so another thing I would like to do, because I've already programmed the MIDI to do this, so you notice the notes on this run of Fs, they're slightly different velocities, and I, I used to play bass a little bit, but I can't quite remember the term for this. 
So feel free to add in the comments if if what the actual term is if you're a bass player. But for example, when you're playing with two two fingers and you're plucking the notes, the second finger isn't going to be as powerful, so it's going to be slightly less velocity. And this is going to make the bass sound a little more lively. So how do we interact the MIDI with the filter? So what we need to do for that is click where it says LFO2, because I don't want to use the LFO, and we're going to choose velocity. I don't want to have it a huge amount of difference. I just want a tiny little bit. And you can see I've added in some other velocity difference and it just adds a nice variation to the track. So lastly, what we can do is add in some glide. And I'll leave it up to you how much you want of this. So this will really work on this section where the notes are overlapping and on this section. So that's too much. That sounded pretty good there. So that is the preset created. What we kind of want to do is add in some guitar S processing. To add that, what we're going to be using is the amp and the pedal. The blues one for me really worked for this sound, but the overall amount of the amp processing was too much, so I'm going to drop the dry wet down a bit. And I would suggest just flick through these, these different modes and you can just choose which amp you want to use. But I'm going to use the blues and just a subtle amount. Next up for the pedal. It's already sounding pretty good, but again, I feel it's a little bit too much. So even just a subtle amount of pedal to any sort of sound will add a little bit more of a raw organic texture in there. Lastly, processing wise, I'm going to use the new channel EQ and I'm just going to boost the low end. I think also to add a bit more bite to the sound, I'm going to boost the mid range and just scan through. So I'll just double click. Yep, so it's adding a bit more bite, especially to the second part of the bar where you got this um, sliding section. Okay, so like we talked about earlier, I would like to use a bandpass version. In the original, there was that live bass, but then uh, Henry Schwartz uh, layered a nice bandpass synth version. I'm going to use the exact same preset. So I'm just going to duplicate the chain. And from there, I'm going to select bandpass. I can then add both these chain level parameters to a macro. And you may have noticed something quite nice. So on this recent update of 10.1, they've fixed when you select a parameter to be a macro that it doesn't go straight down to zero game. And obviously in this case, because it's in dB, it's minus infinity, but any parameter you add to that, so if I just create an audio effects rack, see, 13%, I can call that amp, 7%, which for me is truly amazing, because though it wasn't a lot of work to then rework it back at 7%, if you'd forgotten that value, you would have to undo, then go, okay, it was 7%, and then re-add it again. Not a huge amount of work, but everything which takes that slight millisecond of time away from your creative process kind of just ebbs away at your track. And sometimes it can just leave you feeling a bit frustrated and not wanting to be working. That's our bass grade. Now let's move on to the drums, which Henrik layered into the track. And the drums in the track were just 909s, so I've just selected the classic 909. No matter what door you're using, you, there's going to be a 909 kit. If there isn't, I'd be very surprised, but you can just search online and get a whole load of samples. 
First thing I noticed I needed to do, because this kit is tuned to G-sharp, is just tune all the samples up. So I'm going to go into the controls and pitch it up to semitones to get it to be A-sharp. And I'm going to copy that to all the other parts. It's a very simple house beat. So you just got a kick on each quarter note, and then you've got your offbeat hi-hat. There's two parts to the drum track. There's one with just the open tight hi-hat, and then there's one with the closed hi-hat. So I'm going to duplicate this loop, and then make the second one. And these are a little lower in velocity. Okay, so as you can see, we've uh, recreated the live bass from the original and we've looked at adding some layers and it's given us a nice preset which we can use in our productions. We've also looked at recreating the drums, which again, it's a pretty standard house loop, but it's nice to see that a producer as big as Henry Schwartz feels that you know, there is occasion to still use these standard loops because they're so well ingrained in um, electronic music. Um, so that's us done for our first video. Again, like I stated in the, the intro to the video, please email us in or add to the comments if there's any tracks you would like to see how to recreate the sounds. Um, so the next video, what we're going to be looking at is the musical parts.